Today we're going to be installing some weld on lower control arm cam tab gussets from Total Chaos on our 2018 Toyota 4Runner TRD Off-Road non-KDSS. While we're there we're going to go ahead and perform some preventative maintenance. Uh, we're going to go ahead and be replacing both lower control arms. Uh, I do have an Icon Stage 2 with the tubular upper control arms on it. So we're going to go ahead and be replacing the uh, delta joints that I have in there. Uh, the ones I have on it has about 60,000 miles on the kit. And they're starting to show a little bit of wear. So we're just going to go ahead and take care of that while we're there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and replace the bushings. I did go ahead and buy the press adapter. I'm sure you can make something else work. Uh, I just went ahead and bought the tool. Uh, while we're there, we're also going to be replacing the outer tie rods and possibly the bearings in the Icon uh, coilovers. Uh, we'll just see what kind of shape they're in when we get there. This is the vehicle we're going to be working on today. This is my 2018 Toyota 4Runner. Um, we're going to go ahead and be replacing those lower control arm uh, cam tab gussets in it. I do run uh, plus 4 on the caster. To be able to run the 295 70 17s uh, you know whenever you start running bigger tires and, and stuff like that and you do any type of off-roading uh, the toyotas are notorious for having trouble with the cam tab gussets the factory ones uh, tend to fail uh, this one was a issue that i had with uh, just a technician leaving it loose so i had been lucky up until that point as you can see here, this is the cam tab gusset that we're talking about. Um, it is flat. Um, and it should be holding this eccentric bolt centered. Uh, but it is not doing that any longer um, because the technician had actually left it loose when I had an alignment done. These are bad about um, having issues anyway. So there was probably going to be a time where I was going to have to change them out. So we're going to go ahead and get that taken care of. You can see this is what it's supposed to look like on the other side. Um, or even just like this side over here um, You can see how those tabs are straight not flattened out and they're able to uh, Hold that eccentric bolt uh, where it needs to be So as you can see, I do have the arc splash shields, which I highly recommend um, on both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those, get them out of the way, because I am going to need access to get to the, the, the bolt for the upper control arms. All right, next up, we're going to go ahead and get the uh, front skid plate out of the way. That way we can access the front lower control arm bolts. All right, so now that we got the tires off and the suspension is at full droop on both sides, uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and get these uh, sway bar link out of the way. So we're going to go ahead and take care of that. Now that the suspension is nice and relaxed, you'll be able to just pull this right out so it won't be in a bind. Uh, now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to put a jack underneath the hub assembly here. Uh, and, you know, just support it a little bit because what we're going to end up doing is we're going to pull the coilover uh, shock uh, lower bolt out. Uh, that way we can go ahead and drop the lower control arm out of the vehicle. All right, now that we have the hub assembly supported and the shock bolt out, we're going to go ahead and break loose uh, these two bolts that hold uh, the ball joint and the lower control arm to the hub assembly. You see we got those loose. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and work on uh, breaking loose our lower control arm uh, mounting bolts.
Uh, now that I have these bolts free, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove these bolts here at the hub assembly. Now we should be good to go to go ahead and remove those upper bolts. All right, so now that we've got that free, we can go ahead and remove our bolts and remove our lower control arm. Okay, so now that we have the lower control arm removed, uh, you can see, uh, of course, these are still in good shape, but since I did the other side, I'm going to go ahead and replace these as well. Um, you can see there's three spot welds here. Everything that I read online said you would need an air hammer to get this done. Um, I did go ahead and do the other side. That way I'd have a little bit better idea, you know, how this was going to go. That way I could show you a little bit better. Uh, all I did was I just stepped it up. I used a smaller drill bit, went ahead and drilled it. And then I came back with a bigger bit and put a chisel in and knocks right off. Here we are, we're getting ready to go ahead and drill these gussets out. Um, I thought it would be useful. We can go ahead and do a quick comparison. I guess it is important to note that I did go ahead and weld these uh, together. Uh, whenever you do get them come in, these tabs are separate and then you it's just a fitted piece. You slot it in, you weld it on the back side, uh, you grind it smooth, and then you give a couple welds here on either side. All right, so what I did find worked good for me whenever I did the other side is I'm going to use a 1164 uh, drill bit first just to give me a good little pilot hole on the spot weld. And then we will be stepping it up um, to a quarter inch drill bit and then we'll be just chiseling them off once we're done with that. So we're going to go ahead and step it up to the quarter. spot weld off. There's two. And there's three. Once you get that drilled out you are going to be left with just a little bit of metal here. If you want go ahead and get you like a tiger paw or something similar. And then what you want to do is you just want to come in here and grind it and make it flat. So there we go. Now we want to get a rough idea of how this is going to mount. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab a pick 
and I'm just going to give it a little scrape around the edges so I know where I'm going to be welding it so I can go ahead and get it cleaned up there. So I got me a rough estimate on where I'm going to be needing to clean up my edges. I really don't think you need to weld these things all the way around. As you can see, there was three spot welds uh, holding on the others. The spot welds ain't really the problem. It's just the thickness of the tabs themselves, and that's why they fail. Uh, so what I'm going to do is typically I'll put one over here on the edge because it'll overlap. So I'll put one here on the back side. And then I'll go ahead and get one across the bottom and I'll get one on the inside. Alright, so now that we got that done, we're going to go ahead and get the rest of the, the tabs drilled off of there, and then we can come back and set it up and get ready to weld. Okay, so something to note that I kind of forgot to mention earlier, uh, I do want y'all to notice that these tabs are different. And then like I said, whenever they come in, these, these flat pieces here are not welded on the tab. So it's very important uh, that you take a look because you could possibly ruin your tabs if you welded too many of them the wrong direction. So you will see uh, these have little slanted edges on them. Uh, but when they come in, if these are stacked on top of each other, they're similar. Um, so if you were to just weld them all together, you know, like this, uh, you would run into trouble and would potentially ruin these tabs. So make sure, you know, you look at your vehicle and see the orientation on how they're supposed to go on. Um, these here go on the front. And you'll have one on the front of this tab and one on the back. And you'll notice it fits real good. Uh, but if we go to the rear mounts for the lower control arm, I'll show you the difference here. If you come to the rear mount, if you'll notice, th this is a front tab. It, it has bigger holes, for one. Uh, for two, it will not fit here. Um, now, this one is designed for back here, and it is slanted. I know it's really hard to get a video of it here, but it's notched to fit uh, this area here. But these on the back are not going to be the same on both sides. They're going to be opposite of each other. Um, so just double check before welding these tabs in that you know what you're doing. And like I said, you could potentially be wasting your money if you don't. Another thing you want to pay attention to is, is when you do weld these tabs in, there is a chance that, you know, uh, one could pull in slightly. But what you want to do is you want to make sure before you weld these in that this eccentric will move all the way around. Alright, so I went ahead and I got my cam tab lined up where I want it. And I'm going to go ahead and tack it into place. And then I'm just going to go ahead and repeat the process on the back side. And then we'll see. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a bolt through it and make sure it runs through. Uh, and if it does, I'll go ahead and move to the back side.
All right, I got them all tacked in. I'm just gonna roll them through and see if they're in a good spot. Everything looks to be lined out real nice. I just want to make sure that these move through free as so. Oh yeah, nice. Perfect. Yep. And we'll go ahead and give this one a whirl. And they're functioning good, so I'm going to go ahead and finish welding these up. All right, so we got them all welded up, and I just cleaned up the edges on the inside where the uh, control arm goes in, just so I ain't got no burrs or nothing like that overall. They don't look too bad for flux core. All right, so the tabs are welded in. I put some paint on it, and I let it dry overnight, and we're going to go ahead and move on to getting our new lower control arm ready to go in. We're gonna go ahead and remove this lower ball joint nut and see if we can get this busted off of the old control arm. So we're gonna to wanna to pull that pin. We'll go ahead and pull the bolt. And then what I like to do is I'm gonna go ahead and screw this bolt on backwards. And then as you can see, I got it braced up on these two pieces of wood. And I'm just going to give it a couple of those wax. And now we should be good to go. All right, so now we got our new lower control arm in, our new ball joint. We're going to go ahead and put this in place. I'm going to go ahead and put it on there. Uh, I am going to wait to torque it until... I get it all on the vehicle. Next step in this process is just going to be putting some never sees uh, inside the bolt holes. You could just put it on the bolts. I'm just going to put it on this way. Uh, it works out for me. So now that I got that in the bolt holes, I'm just going to go ahead and wipe the excess off of the outside. Uh, you really don't want it on this mounting edge. When everything gets squeezed together, ideally, these shouldn't be moving. Alright, so our next step is we're going to be putting the lower control arm in the vehicle. And then I just want to show you these eccentric bolts, cam bolts, whatever you'd like to call them. This is the front one, and they are notched and keyed. As you can see, there's only one way uh, this will go on. And that way it lines up. It won't go on any other way. 
and this is going to be the front bolt. Your front bolt is going to be a little bit thicker. And then your rear bolt is going to be the same way, um, except it's keyed on the threads of the actual bolt itself. And And I will come back and I will torque all of these. Alright, so we got that just sitting in there. Let's see what it'll take. All the lower hub assembly bolts. I am going to go ahead and put a little bit of blue Loctite on these. I'll run them in by hand and then I'll come back and torque them. I'm going to go ahead and torque the lower ball joint bolts and they're going to be at 118 foot pounds. Alright, let's torque our ball joint. It's going to come in at 103 foot pounds and then we can install the cotter pin.
Next up is our lower shock bolt. We're going to go ahead and torque that at 70 foot pounds. Next up is I'm going to go ahead and take care of that outer tie rod that I said I would be working on at the beginning of the video. So we're going to go ahead and pull the pin, which I had already got loose. Go ahead and pull the pin. Back our bolt. Put this tool in. Making sure I don't hit anything else. Knocked her out of there. Go ahead and jack it up a little bit. Don't get that puppy free. Now what I'm going to do is I kept that nut right where it was. I'm going to go ahead and back this old outer tie rod off. screw it up right to the point of where our old one was sitting that way we're kind of close on the toe slightly there we go now we're in we can go ahead and install our new castle nut along with a new pin after we torque it Torque our outer tie rod to 67 foot pounds. And then we can go ahead and install our new cotter pin. The sway bar link calls for 52 foot pounds. All right, so at this point, if all you were doing was the lower control arm tabs, uh, we would be done. I know I did tell you at the beginning of this video that we would be doing the outer tie rods, which I did do. The bearings in the coilover, uh, they're located right here, the spherical bearings. Uh, they seem to be in good shape, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave them alone. and. And just keep the ones that I bought uh, in case later on I need them. Uh, and then we can go ahead and move on to our upper control arms. As you can see, I got I got both sides done. I have them in a spot uh, where I think will be a good starting point for the alignment shop to go ahead and you know give me max caster. So I, as you can see, these bolts are in it, inward towards the frame. And then if you go to the back ones, they're going to be outward. So that's going to push my tires as far forward as we possibly can. Uh, of course, we still got to get it in the spec. So we're going to go ahead and take it into the shop after we go ahead and get the upper control arms done and get them to alignment, see what we can get out of it. 